Antenna effect is a phenomenon that arises during the intermediate steps of CMOS manufacturing process. If not taken into consideration, this can be really hazardous. Antenna effect can also cause yield and reliability problems. Here, the word antenna does not really mean the device that converts electrical radiations into magnetic fields that we use in communication systems. So in this video, we are going to see what is antenna effect, how does it happen, and how to fix the antenna violations. As I said earlier, antenna effect arises in the intermediate steps of CMOS manufacturing process that is during dry etching. Here I'm assuming that you already know the CMOS uh, manufacturing process flow. So etching is a phenomenon that happens after uh, lithography. There can be two types of etching as we know. One is wet etching and dry etching. Wet etching is not usually pre preferred because it is isotropic in nature. And it's not good for smaller geometries because it's difficult to control. Wet etching is a phenomenon where uh, we etch the patterns using chemicals such as strong acids or bases. There are different types of dry etching techniques and uh, one of these is plasma etching and this is highly used in the industry today. As you can see in this picture, I have demonstrated the plasma etching where the charged ions are used to enhance the material removal. When I say removal, it means the atoms move from solid state to mobile gas states directly. And this is very selective in nature and it is isot uh, anisotropic in nature. So uh, it's very easy to control. So this is highly used, this kind of technique. But the problem with this technique is plasma is used to it. So this contains this plasma contains free electrons free radicals ionized molecules and many other charged particles and these become a problem known as antenna effect so what is antenna effect antenna effect is a phenomenon of charge collection on the metal lines which results in high voltage at the gate of the transistor during plasma etching and cause gate oxide breakdown when I say plasma etching, it can be a combination of plasma etching and sputtering. This will result into gate oxide breakdown or gate punch through. Since gate is a very ultra thin layer of oxide or insulator, it can be easily broken. So here we have a scenario shown in this picture A where this is the driver and here is the receiver. And driver is not gate as you can see this is a diffusion region n or p and uh, it has a connection to lower metal layers first maybe m0 or m1 this is m1 or m0 and it goes to higher metals over here and comes back to m1 again at the connection right but this m0 or m1 whichever it is the local uh, metal layer this m is longer and its area is very high since its area and since it is longer also the charge accumulation happens here during manufacturing let's understand that uh, m2 is not manufactured yet so the base metal la uh, base layer is manufactured and m0 or m1 is manufactured this metal layer is manufactured and the second connection is hasn't happened yet and we are doing plasma uh, etching now in that case what happens is the charges in the plasma, the electrons, maybe free electrons, they can come and they can discharge through this metal. So what happens is a large amount of electrons rush through this metal and uh, it causes the gate oxide breakdown. And this is a permanent damage to the gate oxide. It cannot be uh, solved by uh, any other means later. And that is why the antenna effect is also called as plasma induced gate oxide damage. So the rules of antenna violations are provided in the design rule manual document to avoid uh, antenna effect. And this can be used in routers. The router engines of PNR stage, the placement and routing stages will use uh, these antenna, viol uh, antenna rules to uh, do the routing. And uh, it specifies one very important parameter called as maximum allow allowable uh, ratio uh, which is also called as antenna ratio this is the maximum allow allowable ratio of metal area to gate area 
for each interconnect layer so the value of the real exposed metal area divided by the gate area should be less than the maximum antenna ratio that they have specified in the foundry so how can we fix antenna effect there are several techniques but i have mentioned few very uh, common techniques which are used in the industry today and one of them again the dummy load insertion is uh, not well known but uh, these three techniques which are, which are changing the routing order antenna diode insertion or gene accidental insertion and metal layer hopping or metal jumper usage are uh, highly used and dummy load insertion is also a technique which is available but again it depends now here i have shown all the three possible uh, cases i haven't shown the dummy load insertion uh, i'll explain the antenna diode and later it will be similar to antenna diode anyway so the first technique is routing uh, changes or changing the routing order that can be done since this is the receiver we can uh, make sure always one thing that is uh, the gate is connected to higher metal layers always and it's not connected to lower metal layers in this case since it is higher it is connected to higher metal layers uh, it will not cause any problem because uh, uh, this will not be manufactured first right so this will be manufactured first uh, from the driver this doesn't have any problem it's not connected to gate so this doesn't have any problem so we have uh, a connection from the top to through the vrs to this uh, gate so the area at m0 or lower metal layers is very small so this can be done instead of doing m1 here and m2 here we can do m1 here and m2 here that's the change in the routing order which can help the second type of technique is inserting a diode um, when i say a diode it should be uh, reverse biased if you can see this so if this is the metal this is how it has to be connected because the electrons will come see uh, imagine this is not manufactured yet this metal layer so electrons will come and they flow to the ground so this is how they flow if the electrons has to flow this way the current flows this way right so that is how uh, it should be biased also but there are problems with these techniques right this uh, technique may not be available uh, always because this kind of changing the routing order may not be possible always because of congestion and diode insertion results in ex uh, extra capacitance one thing because the input capacitance increases which in turn since input load uh, so the uh, since this uh, the capacitance increases it creates delay and may it may create setup violations and also this has uh, more area this uh, this wants more area right the one thing that we need to make sure that whenever do we do uh, uh, this antenna diode insertion sometimes they are called gene cell insertion it has to be an n type it is preferred to use n type because a p type uh, diode will again need a biasing for n well and the third technique is using metal jumpers or um, metal metal hopping right so in this technique what we do is we we cut this metal the lower metal over here as near to the gate as possible and we route it in the uh, top metal layer again this may not be available always it needs extra vias and uh, extra metal usage and the fourth one uh, that i explained is uh, the dummy metal uh, sorry the dummy load insertion which is same as this antenna uh, diode insertion but we will have a dummy load i mean a dummy transistor maybe nearby uh, uh, this gate so that will again um, bias this to ground so the charges flow to the ground through that uh, connection but again that it will increase input capacitance and cause delay and also it increases area so the area cost by that is more than the antenna diode so that's a problem so this is a brief discussion about what is antenna effect and uh, how it happens and what are the techniques to uh, solve this antenna effect so that's all for now i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and bye bye